Have you ever wondered what truly sets a senior designer apart from junior? Do seniors just know Figma better or they know some magic plugins? I believe there are two key factors that make the difference – taste and vision. As a senior designer, you don't just see what's good and what's not, you have a vision of how to transform a good design into something special. In today's video, we're going to review a clock designed in Figma by one of our junior designers. I will show you some tips, improvements and techniques that can make the image look better. And just before we start, I want to let you know that you can access the Figma file with the final version of the clock design from this video by following the link in the description. So stick around and let's begin! Here is a junior version of the clock. It looks fine, but I can quickly spot few areas for improvement. Look at the bottom right corner, you can barely see the shape of the clock. And it's not always bad, but since it's too dark, it makes it much harder to blend the foreground and background. Another thing that caught my attention is that we can make the glow effect more visually appealing. There is a special technique for that, which we're going to talk about. The minute and hour marks color and shadows are too academic, unnatural. Our marks are too thick. I also feel that there are too many blue accents. You know that when you have too much of something, you stop valuing it. So now we'll start from scratch and try to fix those things. First, let's make a basic clock shape, center pin and arrows. And here is tip number one. Use a pen tool and stroke for arrows instead of rectangles. Rectangles are harder to adjust. For any change you will have to reposition the center, adjust the size and then rotate. And just see for yourself in that quick example and how much simpler it is to use pen tool and stroke. By stretching the corner, you can basically change the angle and the length of the arrow. And if you need to make it narrower, you can just change the stroke width. Now we need to draw the minute and hour marks. Here is a tip number two. Since we're drawing a clock, you can just find one on Google, drop it to Figma, increase exposure for better visibility and set the opacity so you can just draw lines on top of it. There are a few options of how we can do these marks. Juniors probably will go with the Looper Legacy plugin, or worse, will try to manually position each line. With Looper Legacy you can get the job done, but you will create a separate layer for each mark and most likely you will use multiple masks to make it easier to fine-tune the size. You might wonder why we can't create the lines with the exact size we want from the beginning. But the truth is, designs evolve through the process of drawing. Every decision you make can affect the look and the feel. And often you just have to go back and adjust something because it no longer works well. So as a better alternative to the Looper Legacy plugin, I recommend using dash strokes. You can create a new frame, apply a stroke, then under the advanced settings choose stroke style as dash and then you will have multiple settings like gap and dash. The gap will basically control the distance between your lines. The dash will control the width and then by changing the stroke size you can adjust the length of the line. It's simple and very flexible, so in case we decide to adjust it, and we will, we'll have everything ready and won't need to redraw it again. As a next step, we need to start thinking about our global illumination. Graphical elements with more natural light will always look better. Let's set our key light, for example, at the left top corner. In 3D software, for this type of shot, you will probably use multiple light sources. But we don't need to go too far here with our pseudo 3D and just use one key light and fake the rest based on our taste, with some assumptions. With this light setup, our main clock shape will cast a shadow in the opposite direction from the light source. The same will happen with any other objects inside the clock. The closer we are to the light source, the brighter the color should be. But the left top edges have a height, so they will block the light, which means there will be a shadow inside the inner circle too. For some shadows, we are going to use layer blue, for other gradients. You might have a question, why not to use a drop shadow for this? It's because of flexibility and control over the final look. For minute marks, we can make an allowance 
Just copy the layer and make layer blur without any custom adjustments for each mark. Since the object is very small, from a distance we won't notice the direction of the shadow anyway, but the shadow will give a sense of depth. For our marks, we will copy the layer and use outline stroke. It will allow us to adjust each mark individually. The goal is not to make it super perfect, just to make it a little bit more real. We will do the same for errors. Let's see the difference so far we have with Junior's version. I hope you can see it. In minor details, the Senior's version already looks more tasteful and correct. Finally, it's time to add some color. We'll start with the glow effect on the arrows. The mistake beginners often make when implementing a glow effect is that if they want to have a blue glow, they use blue color to achieve that. But in the real world, the way your camera and you perceive the light is that you see white color at the center, at the brightest point, and only then moving further from it, the light starts changing to the specific color. So if you do it the wrong way, like I just showed in Figma, the result will be ok, but now if we do it the right way, by using multiple blur tool layers with blue color and the white seconds line, it looks more natural and also more emotional. Now let's just add more glow and blue reflection on surrounding elements and we're good. The clock is almost ready, so one last thing I want to point out is how to do the outer circle glow. Use the same technique as for the arrows, but make sure you do it with strokes and mask, not subtracting ellipses. It's easier to do with mask and adjustments will be much simpler. And for the final touches, let's bring some textures. It's very easy to do and it gives the image extra details. You can add dots, noise, lines or whatever else. You can even add it to the edges of the clock. Experiment with it and put it anywhere you like. We're done, let's compare our final results. I hope you like the seniors version more and learned something new from this video. Try to invest a little bit of extra time into the quality and your skills will grow from project to project. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like this, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.